What's up, people of the earth? Welcome to the video. Today I want to talk about failure. Now, failure is one of those things that it really separates those who get results and who don't get results. One thing I've noticed is that if you know how to push yourself, you get better results, almost always. So, learning how to push yourself close to failure and even beyond failure is a skill that is incredibly useful. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. This first set is a set of pause pull-ups that is to failure. So you can see the reps are getting slower and slower until this last rep when I hit failure. So you can see I go up and then don't succeed. The second technique is called cluster sets. So this is when you take a heavy weight and you do it for as many reps as you can. However, you take pauses in between the reps to sort of recover a little bit. Instead of just going all out from the very start, which I may, you know, maybe I can get th four reps with this, I pause slightly in between each rep and sort of reset. You can see I'm resetting my technique, focusing, recovering a little bit, and that allows me to get more reps with the same weight. So this allows you to effectively get more reps than you otherwise could. It's essentially pushing past failure in a way. So try this technique out. It works better for lower reps. So I would keep the sets to around uh, six to 10 reps and just sort of rest pause your way to as many reps as you can get. So this was for me a pretty heavy weight. You can see just barely getting that last one up. Actually, my quad cramped. You can see me. <laughs> you can see me grab my my leg there. Uh, that's a Z press, a really good exercise for the shoulders. The next one I want to show you is a slow eccentric lowering. So on this one, it's a underhand grip pull down, which is really good for the lats, for the biceps, for the forearms. You'll see when I hit failure, I'll actually lower the last rep as slow as I can. So this is a huge growth stimulus. Actually, most of the growth stimulus for muscle building is in the lowering part of the weight. I mean, you wouldn't go to the gym and say, oh, I'm gonna go lower some weights at the gym. But essentially, the lowering part is just as important. So this might look easier than lifting and lowering the weight, but actually it's incredibly difficult. I'm not trying to lower it slowly, I'm trying to not lower at all and it's just lowering because the muscle is failing all right now moving to drop sets so this is where you start off with a weight and you do it for as many reps as you can and then when you're finished going to failure you choose a lighter weight to sort of start again so you fail you drop the weight you go again for the size of the drop i would go anywhere from about 50 percent to 75% of the original weight. So these are 10 kilo dumbbells. And after I failed, I dropped down to five kilos. So I think I got 20 reps and then 20 reps. Don't worry about how many reps you get, just fail. If you're failing, then it's fine, you're working. I would keep the reps around 10 to 20 for this exercise but don't focus on how many reps you get. Just focus on really going until you can't do any more. And that'll ensure that you get the most growth. Another technique is partials. So partials are when you do a full range of motion. This is a, an exercise of my own creation called skiers. Looks like you're sort of skiing along. It works the traps, the rear delts, uh, a little, the lats a little bit. So you do full range of motion for as many reps as you can. Then when you fail, you do a partial range of motion. Now this doesn't work for all exercises. It only works for uh, pulling exercises for the most part. Uh, but this is a great way to get a huge growth stimulus for the muscles. All right, the next one is called rest pause. So this is again where you go to failure. You might be noticing a pattern here. Most of these are to failure and then adding something. But for rest pause, you go to failure, probably in the 10 to 20, maybe 30 rest range, rep range, rather. Uh, and then you pause 
and you take a rest. Now, you aren't like going somewhere else and lying on a sofa resting. You're resting maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds. But this rest allows you to recover a little bit, to get some uh, energy back and prepare for the next part of the set. So today I did a set of about 20 and then five sets of five with uh, a short break in between. I don't usually time the breaks. What I usually do is I take three to five deep breaths. These are also called myo reps, M-Y-O-R-E-P-S. So these are really, really good for smaller muscle groups especially. You can do them with, squ with squats and deadlifts, but they're actually better for smaller muscle groups like the shoulders, the arms, maybe the calves. You might be able to do them for the back as well, but I would, I would stick to arms and shoulders for the most part, especially if you're pushing really hard. So these really, really burn. Uh, on this fourth and fifth rep of each set, that's failure. I'm going to failure again. And those are the reps that get you the most benefit. So if you do a set of 20 to failure, the only beneficial reps are the last few. By doing rest pause, you actually allow yourself more reps close to failure because you're not fully recovering. If you did a set of 20 and then five sets of five with full recovery, you're getting nothing from the five sets of five. But if you don't allow yourself to fully recover, you're staying close to failure and thus you're getting a lot of benefit from it. Generally speaking, if something is uncomfortable, you can see me there, it's definitely uncomfortable, then you're going to be getting a lot of benefit from it. So training close to failure and beyond failure is one of the best ways to fully develop the muscle. And I haven't found anything more effective than these methods. So try them out. I'll put them on the screen and I hope you get good results from it. I'm sure you will. Goodbye.